Give me a stick of butter, a casserole dish, and less than five minutes a day. And together, we'll build an active, engaged online community. As a social media creator, I invite several million people into my kitchen every day. And together, we try new recipes, we talk about our day, and we laugh at our failures. There's plenty to laugh about with me. <laughs> But the most effective thing we do is create space. Space for questions, for learning, for encouraging one another, and most importantly, space for a group of strangers to come together and participate in building the positive social media experience we all want. I may be at the helm of this effort for positivity, but I wasn't always the happy person my audience has come to know. In the years leading up to 2020, I started to realize what an unhappy person I really was. I had terrible road rage. I complained constantly about anything to anyone that would listen. I found myself consumed with politics and following the 2020 election, I pulled the plug on social media altogether. I spent the next year working on myself. And in the spring of 2022, I created a TikTok account just so I could like videos of my best friend's dog. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love a cute Frenchie, right? Now, it didn't take long for me to start dabbling and creating content of my own, but this time things were going to be different. I told myself, my friends, and my family that I would intentionally have a positive online experience. I stated that objective out loud, and I was determined that if I couldn't find it, I would just create it myself. Old habits die hard, and errors were made along the way, but that year off had changed me, and I wasn't going back. And while I was never anything but my authentic cell phone camera, it was a viral video about a year ago, a recipe for Salisbury steak that really kick-started my activism. We want to call it that. At the beginning of that video, I said two words that seemed to just break the internet. What were those two words? My husband. I love you, babe. But I received some of the most vile, hateful remarks I've ever seen. And even the casual ones were really just awful. So you got to understand, I grew up in the 80s and 90s in a small town in South Mississippi. I was the oldest and only son of a Baptist preacher. I then spent the majority of my adult life working in the service industry, casinos, bars, restaurants. There's not a whole lot you can say to me that I haven't already heard. But those negative comments got me to thinking. And not about myself, but about the bystanders. What if another person out there struggling with themselves, their identity, not as confident and secure as I am, what if they came here looking for a recipe and instead they saw this heinous rhetoric directed at me and by proxy at themselves? I just can't let that stand. So I filmed a video replying to those comments as a whole. I drew my line in the sand and I feel like this is when something inside me really woke up and took hold and started to make sense. I'm strong enough to withstand the really horrible things people say online, but others, they can't. So my kitchen would be a place for those people to come and feel comfortable. My kitchen would be a place to learn without judgment, and together we would build the space we want to inhabit. Nowadays, my mission for inclusivity isn't always articulated in words. Instead, I may wear a particular shirt, a color of importance. I might make a reference in the recipe or paint my nails. I don't shy away from simple, accessible dishes, prepackaged ingredients and shortcuts, because not everyone has the time, resources, 
mental or physical abilities to cook everything from scratch. The gay or transgender person and the people that love them. People who are feeling isolated and alone for whatever reason, who really are all just so tired of talking about it. Maybe they see my blue and pink fingernails, or maybe they see the little wooden rainbow on the counter in the background, and they know. They know they're welcome in this kitchen. We don't have to talk about it. Just hang out with me. Let's throw some shit in the crock pot for two and a half minutes. (laughs) I want to meet people right where they are. Now, we've created our space. We've invited our audience in. It's time to defend the boundaries that we've drawn. I've been called an aggressive, swearing Mr. Rogers. And honestly, (laughs) it's probably my favorite compliment. Thank you. (laughs) I don't shy away from the negative attention. I like to meet it head on. It doesn't hurt that I got a mouth on me. But it's a fine line to walk. If you engage with it too often, you'll get pulled in. But to ignore it entirely, mm, that makes me feel complicit. The response from my audience has been overwhelming. People are starving for authentic, sincere, relatable content. People want to do good, to be good, to be the very best version of themselves. And if you just give them the space and opportunity, they will participate. My audience affectionately dubbed the hashtag Barefoot Neighborhood put together 40 beds for 40 kids in foster care for my 40th birthday in 2022. In 2023, they bought out countless Amazon wish lists for kids. They blew up small businesses and they raised more than $23,000 for charitable causes. One of those organizations is called Elijah's Closet, and they work to provide tangible, real-time assistance to kids and families in the foster system on my home turf, the Mississippi Gulf Coast. The Barefoot neighborhood has become passionate about them. People from all over the world rally when they need something, and if I go too long without mentioning Elijah's Closet, my community starts asking me about them. In 2024 alone, My community has raised over $33,000 to help Elijah's Closet purchase the building that they're renting. This is by far my favorite part of social media, the power to create real, direct change in people's lives. So do we just ignore the people who are not on my side, the people who don't agree that I should be cooking dinner for my husband, what about them? Here's the thing. No one likes to be lectured to or preached at. I certainly don't. The best I can do is keep showing up every day and holding my ground and letting them see that my kitchen really is no different than theirs. Keep showing up and allowing those people to witness what these hands with this incredibly diverse group of people around me can really get accomplished. After doing this for nearly two years, I've discovered that I would much rather have engagement over views. And don't get me wrong, we all want that video that's been viewed 10 million times, but if the viewers are not interacting with your content, What do the views matter? I want an audience that is plugged in, invested in me and their fellow community members, finding something of value in my content and then taking action. After building a platform of nearly 3 million followers, writing a cookbook and releasing three different versions of that cookbook, landing brand deals and sponsorships that I could only ever dream of, Let me tell you what my measure of true 
success is. It's the way my audience interacts with each other in the comment section. That is the canary in the coal mine that will tell you if you've achieved your goal or not. Someone commented on a recipe and said, what temperature is the oven supposed to be on? <laughs> like, of course I said that in the video. But someone else replied and they said, 350. Don't worry, I had to watch it twice to catch it. It was really nice, right? <laughs> Someone else commented and said that they would love to have a cookbook, but they just can't swing it right now. Before I could even reply, someone else had, and they offered to purchase a cookbook for them, a complete stranger. If I'm doing a fundraiser and I ask my audience for five bucks a piece, my followers are inevitably going to go donate 20, and then they're going to come back to the comment section, and they're going to say, hey, if there's anyone out there that wanted to donate and couldn't, I got three of you covered. My comment sections are full of people answering questions for each other, lifting one another up, and I've seen friendships formed right there. Online communities are so real and they are very powerful. So how do we use that power? We've all seen how online interactions can eat away at our humanity and divide us into our echo chambers and just reinforce our isolation. But the other side of that, the aggressive Mr. Rogers side, that is a force to be reckoned with. And if we could just be intentional with our online actions, sprinkle in some good old-fashioned Southern hospitality, season it up with a few cuss words, we can make the world a much better place. Thank you. <laughs>